begin the current daf and sech this tain is daf gimel. Begin three lines down the top of the yamad. The gemara continues the halacha of nisach hamayim. What's the source for it and how long it is? Where the gemara in the previous daf had related nisach hamayim to the halacha mashvur luchmer degeshem, which was the halacha of our mission. She is corresponds to the concept of the chesed and the bchaim mission joining with today's daf. Some of the discussed in today's daf are on which day sukkahs was the nisach hamayim on mizbech. The former has already started that discussion in the previous daf. It seems to be that Nitzchamayim, there were different opinions when it actually started. What other elements of whether need or need not be mentioned in the davening? As that was the halacha of our opening mission of this Mesech, the name is the Meskin Kibur's Keshamim. When we start mentioning Mashaburach, we mentioned some of the other ha, uh, Haskars. When the Shemayin Essay need to be repeated because you forgot to mention, like we say, Mashaburach, not the Geshem, the benefits of wind and clouds as compared to rain which that also comes into the discussion about what you have to mention in Shemayin Esri. And one of the important terms and concepts of today's daf is halacha mesh mesinai, that there are certain things that we don't know from the Pasuk per se, but we know as primarily as a, a tradition from Meshav from our Sinai. So yes, in, in the previous daf we had mentioned five opinions when we begin to say Masha Baruch Hu and the reason for them. We had Rebbe Yezer who said, you start from Yom Tavrish Shachag. You start as the Braise had taught Mishas Netilas Lulub, in Shachris of the first day of Sukkot is when you start saying because just like Lula we said needs to grow in water, so too we need water in the world that we mentioned on the first day of Sukkot. Reb Shua said, and in the Mishnah he says, in the last day of Sukkot, we mentioned whether we begin the seventh day at Mincha or that Shemina Tzeres at Meir, but even as a man, the last day again, whether it be the eighth day, which is Shemina Tzeres, or that of the last day of Sukkot. Behuda, he says, in the name of Rabbi Yeshua, he says, uh, at Musaf, he was Machalk on the eighth day. He says, in the morning, Shachris. No, Musaf, yeah, that's when he starts saying Mashiach Rechem Elegeshem. And we'll see later on, the Gemara also says that this is Rabbi Yeshua ben Maseira. The fourth opinion, Rabbi Yehuda ben Maseira, he holds that it's on the second day of Sukkot, you start mentioning, because we said that's the first remnants of Nisach Amayim, where it spells out the, the word Mayim, Mem, Yud, Mem, the first one was on the second day of Sukkot when it says Beniskei Hem. Okay, that's when he says you start the Mashiach Rechem Elegeshem. Rukiva was the fifth opinion. He says the Shish B'chagu Maskei on the sixth day of Sukkot because that's the main remnants of Nisach Amayim. We said Un Nesachah Ha Its Libations, which is one carbon that's having two libations. That's on the sixth day of Sukkot. Those are the five different opinions that we had regarding when you start saying Mashiach Rechem Elegeshem. Now, the Gemara continues first bringing one more source for this halacha of how you know that there's Nisach HaMayim on Sukkot. So we're on the third line down at the top, on Dav Gimel with Al. Tanya Lentna Bryce. Nasanaymi, he says, it says in the Pasuk in Bamidbar, it says that its libations should be a quarter of a hin for one lamb. Akaidesh in the holy, Haseich Nesach Sheikh Hashem. Pouring you shall pour this intoxicating beverage to Hashem. Now, it says Haseich Nesach, Bishnei Nesuch and Akasim Dav. The Pasuk is telling you that there's two different libations. That's the source that you see that there's two different libations. One is water and one is wine. We had in the previous half a different source where we said that because of the remnants of Mayim, here we bring another source. Says the but how do you know? Like we had asked in the previous half. Maybe both of the libations are both of wine. How do you know one's water? Says the Gemara, and Ken, that the is lift of crowd and let the Pasik say, Oi Hasech Hasech, Oi Nesach Nesach. Keep the same terminology. My hasech nesach, why are you not only doubling, you're also changing the wording. Ah, Shammah no, we learn from that, it's from the fact that you're changing the wording, we learn two halachas. First of all, that's going to be double libations, and also chad demayim, chad dechamer. One will be water, and one will be wine. That's a, just another source. But continuing from the theme that we just mentioned a moment ago, the Gemara first understands that the day we begin saying Mashiach Baruch Hamayim Degeshem corresponds to the day Nisach Hamayim was begun. And that's how it sounded like we lived in the previous stuff. That it says, and that's what we're learning of the Nisach HaMayim. So it sounds like that the day that you start saying, is going to be the day that you start doing the Nisach HaMayim. So the Gemara says, did not, and this is what the Mishnah Sech the Sukkot, Nisach HaMayim called Zayin, that there's the Nisach HaMayim, this water libation that you did over the Sukkot was all seven days. Mani, who is it like? As evident from the way Rashi learns, that it could only be reconciled with Rebbe Yes. Rebbe Yezer is the one who says that you start Mashab Ruch on day one, which is when you start taking the Lulu. That could be, the places they point out 
the mighty Mara, like the Shem Bedesi, that he holds that place would disagree with this. But Al Kapanim, at least according to Rabbi it would sound like you start on day one, you do for all seven days. But according to all the other Tanan, it seemingly cannot be like that, as the Gemara explains. E Rabbi Yeshua, if it's like Rabbi Yeshua who says that you only start on the last day of Sukkot, so name a Chad Yerba. And, and it, again, it sounds like because we're learning it out from Nisach Amayim. So then you should only mention it, uh, it should, it's only going to be one day. E Rabbi Kiva, so then you can have Trey Yaimi, because, and nothing more, because he says from Un that's on the sixth day on Sukkot, that's where he comes to include the halach of Nitzchamayim, so you're only going to do it the sixth and seventh day. And he would be Huda ben Becerra, who he learns out from day two, where it starts the le- spelling out the letter Mayim, the word Mayim from Ben Hem. So then you have Shittayim, you have six days. So who is the Tana, again, besides Rebbe Lazar, that's going to be this halacha of that for seven days you're going to do that of Nitzchamayim? Says the Gemara, Rebbe Huda ben Becerra. Really, I can tell you the Behudah of that although he said that Nitzach HaMayim, you start spelling out the word Mayim from day two, so he can get seven days, I'll tell you why. Because Basulu Kerbi Huda, the Masnim, tells the Behudah of our Mishnah. So now we're learning in, our, in, 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 in the Mishnah of Masech the Sukkah, the Behudah Aymer, he says, the local Yimanasach Kol Shemayna. He says, actually, Nitzach HaMayim wasn't only for up until Shemini Atzeres. He says, was including that of Shemini Atzeres. So, meaning, meaning, Rabbi Huda ben Maseira doesn't hold like him that you do it for all eight days, but he does hold like him that you do it on Shemini Atzeres, and since you're going to do it on the eighth day, so it comes up to Rabbi Huda ben Seira, although he says you start on the second day of Sukkot, you're going to have the Sukkot all quote seven days, because he's removing day one, and he's bringing in day eight. So you could have seven days of Nitzach HaMayim, not only according to Rebbe Yezer, even according to Rebbe Yezer, it says you start in day two, because that's where the word Mayim starts being Merumas, because you're not going just till the end of Sukkot, you're going till the end of Shemini Atzeres, which David is going to give you seven days. On that, the Gemara asks, that could you really say that Rebbe Yezer holds that you do Nitzach HaMayim on Shemini Atzeres? How could you say that? Why? What's the question? Why is it that you're telling me, and you're assuming, and you're explaining, and you're doing that you don't do Nisach HaMayim on the first day of Sukkot? From the fact that you say that on the first day of Sukkot, you don't mention Hashem Ruach, because the Chiru Mizi Mayim, because where is water is alluded to in the Sukkot? B'Shein who did a Mizi, it only starts being alluded to on the second day of Sukkot, from B'Nis Hem. That's where we include Nisach HaMayim, because it spells out Mem, Yud, Mem, and Shmini Nami. How could you say that he would do Nisach HaMayim on Shemina Tzeres? But, Ki uh, Demizi Mayim, when this water alluded to, B'Shvi who did Demizi, it stops on day seven. The Mem Yud Mem of Mayim, that it starts on day two, and then it mentions the Yud on day six, and then it mentions the Mem on day seven, that ends the spelling of Kemishpat Tam. So that's not on Shemina Tzeres, just like you wouldn't say on day one because it didn't start spelling it yet. So where it finishes spelling is on day seven, so you wouldn't say day eight. So how could you say that the Mishnah B'nai Kibbutz Maseiro going like that opinion of Rabbi Huda when Rabbi Huda says on Shmini Atzeres and he can't he seemingly can't hold the Shmini Atzeres? Tell the says the Gemara Rabbi Shuhi. Really, the halacha the Mishnah could be like Rabbi Shua, even like Rabbi Shua. Then he says that when do you start saying Mashburach is Mishas Hanachase. He says when you start when you even put down the lulu, which on day seven, and even so he could hold this Chavayim is all seven days. You know why? Because when Nisach HaMayim kol Shiva Hel Chasogim Niramah. It's not like we assumed. We thought on previous daf that it was connected. Because that's what it sounded like we were saying. We're saying, oh, when you start saying Mashiach Baruch HaMayim is, oh, when it started being alluded to in the Torah, the Mem that spelled out. So that's on day two. Or let's say on day seven, we said that you start mentioning the Mishas HaMachasai. So we thought that would, would connect to that of when you do the Nisach HaMayim. It's not true. The Halacha of Mashiach Baruch HaMayim is one thing. And the halacha of Nisra is something else. That's the halacha of Mishra Messina. He brings the following three teachings, and Rashi elsewhere in Shah says it's not only these three, it's just that they were taught together, so he mentioned this together. But these three teachings, Esther Natias, which Taisa points out specifically saplings, that are spread out in a base saw, so you could plow the whole base saw before Shemitah year all the way up into Rosh Hashanah, even though generally other fields. 
You're not allowed to plow before the Shemitah, you have 30 days. Here you're allowed to plow because if you wouldn't plow it, it would ruin the area because, again, these are young saplings and they need to be plowed so you can plow all the way up until Shemitah. And Arava, which Trace explains, is the minig of taking the Aravas and going around the Mizbeach. And the Nisachamayim, and the water libations all seven days, is halacha lamaisha nisinai, and therefore it's not a difficulty. It could even be like a Yeshua who holds that it's you start shock, you, you, you do Masha Baruch on day seven or possibly day eight, he would hold the Nisachamayim starts all the way in the beginning of the Sukkot. As Rashi explains, it was definitely the Mishnah of the second Sukkot that says it's called Shiva. Could be like a Beliezer, but like a Yiva Misera and a Gerbe Kiva, you can't explain it. So, why didn't we say in the Gemara it's like a Beliezer? So, Rashi says, we didn't have to tell you if it's like a Beliezer, because most definitely it could be like a Beliezer, because he holds you start saying much on day one, and therefore, of course, you would start in this Chamaim on day one, and you would have it for seven days. This is we're saying is like Mishua is a Chiddush. And we're saying that even though it's like Rabbi Shua, that says it's when you put down the Lulav at the end of Sukkot, could be doing this on the whole Sukkot. But, like Yehuda the Seder, like Rabbi Kiva says Rashi, you cannot explain the light. Because Rabbi Yehuda learns it out from the fact that it says on day two, Beniskehem, obviously he holds, but Nishamayim, yes, yeah, only six days. Because, like we said, you can't say that, oh, exclude day one, but include day eight, because, like we said, he doesn't hold like Rabbi Yehuda to do on day eight. And Rabbi Kiva, who learns out from Unisachaha, who says that it says on day six, obviously he holds that Nishamayim was only two days. Yeah, someone had asked him the previous day, what, what do you mean? So, Nishamayim, yeah. Credit to Rashi explains that he would hold Nisach was only two days. But you can explain like a Yeshua, because the Yeshua wasn't tying it in together regarding Nisach He was saying when you put down the Lula. So therefore, you're only going to mention Yom Tev Achrim, because rain on Sukkot is a similar Kalala. So you're not going to be mentioning Mashiach Baruch Medegeshem. But Nisach HaMayim, which is, which is Halach HaMesh Mishnah, that he could only was called Shiva, and therefore not only necessarily to the Yezer, could even have been like that of Yeshua, but Rashi explains it could not have been like the other opinions of Rabbi Yudha ben Bistera and of that of Rabbi Kiva. We continue, we said in the Brisa, in Yudha Oymer, Mishum Rabbi Shua, we mentioned this in the previous staff, his opinion was, if someone davens for the Amen on the last day of Sukkot, so we said, the one who gets Musaf, he'll mention that of Masha Baruch and the Geshem. Harishin Asa, the Baal Shach, is not going to mention it. And the other way around, but the end, and the coming into springtime, the Yom Tevich and Shal Pesach, and the first in Pesach, Harish and Maskeh, the Baal Shachas will still mention Masha Baruch and Medigeshen, Achen and Maskeh, the last one, the Baal Musa, is not going to mention it anymore. It says the Gemara, Hi Rabbi Yeshua. The Gemara here is just clarifying. We quoted a Rabbi Huda in the name of Rabbi Yeshua. So which Rabbi Yeshua is this that holds <laughs> that there's a chili between the Baal Shachas and the Baal Musa? He let me be sure the Masnitin, if it's a Bishu about Mishnah, and someone had actually asked this on the previous dot, that it sounds like, oh, that's Rabbi Yeshua, because Rabbi Yeshua mentioned also about on, on the last day. But he says, He says that you mention it on on the last day of Sukkot. Where, as Rashi explains, that sounds like that even the Baal Shachris is also going to mention Mashabrahmaid Geshem. But over here, we have Rabbi Yehuda, the name of Rabbi Yeshua, that's being Mechali. He's saying that the Baal Shachas is not going to mention, only Baal Musa is going to mention. So it doesn't sound like Rabbi Yeshua of our Mishnah. So who is this Rabbi Yeshua that Rabbi Yehuda is in his name, saying that you give me Mechali on the last day of Sukkot? I like Rabbi the Brisa. You're right, it's not Rabbi Yeshua of our Mishnah. It's Rabbi Yeshua of the Brisa. Now, the problem is, as we just quoted the Brisa right now, Ha'am HaMeshas HaMechasa. He says in the Brisa that when you start saying Mashabura, <laughs> is... On the seventh day of Sukkot, when you start, when you put down the lulav, and here we're saying that you start saying it only on the last day of Sukkot, which Rashi explains the Shemini Atzeres, which Bal Shachas not Bal Musav yet, but that's not like Mishu the Brisa either. So who is this Rabbi Shua that you're saying in his name that you can be mechal between Bal Shachas and Bal Musav? It's not like Mishu of our Mishnah, it's not like Mishu of the Brisa. Moreover, the soup here we're coming from a different angle. How the time we learn the Brisa in a different sugi. Rabbi Huda Oymer Mishum Ben Beseir. So again, it's Rabbi Huda again, saying the name of, of seemingly someone else. The first version of our Brisa was the name of Rabbi Shua. Here we're saying the name of Ben Beseir. But he says the same Allah. So he will have now taken Rabbi Yom Tavach and Shachag. Some down to Ahmed in the last day of Sukkot is Ha'achrin Masker. The Baal Musaf is going to mention Masher Ruach, but the Baal Shachas is not going to. So Hai Ben Beseir. Which Ben Beseir is this? Elaim Rabbi Huda Ben Beseir. If it's Rabbi Huda Ben Beseir, who is he's the well known Ben Beseir? Uh, but we quote him also before saying, He says you start saying it on, on the second day of Sukkot, 
not on the last day and there's a chalut in Balshachas Bamusaf. So the Gemara actually takes these two questions and actually says that answers the question. Amr of Nachman Yitzchak, he says to hey, you're going to explain that both of these teachings that Yehuda was saying in the name of them was the same person. Rebbe Yeshua ben Becerra. So it's not the Rebbe Yeshua that we always talk about, that we quoted. And it's not, when we said ben Becerra, it's not Rebbe Yehuda ben Becerra. It's the same person. It's Rebbe Yeshua ben Becerra. Zimna de Karle Bishnei. Sometimes he called him by his name, meaning Rebbe Yeshua. Zimna de Karle Bishnei da Abba. Sometimes he called him by the name of his father, which was Becerra. As the Gemara explains. <laughs> Before he had smicha, it wasn't so chasha. So he called him in the name of his father. He says, Oh, this is uh, an tata. So he called him Ben Beseira. But after that, he already had smicha, then he called him by his own significant name, which is that of Rabbi Shua. And that's Tam. The Gemara is clarifying who is his opinion. Who is the same name of Rabbi Shua? And who is the same name of Rabbi Ben Beseira? It's not, again, Rabbi Shua, because Rabbi Shua has a different opinion. It's not Rabbi Shua, because he has a different opinion. It's Rabbi Shua, Ben Beseira. He's the one, as we mentioned in the beginning, we said that the Gemara is going to later say that that opinion of Rabbi Shua is also that of Rabbi Shua Ben Beseira. That's that opinion that holds that it's on the last day of Sukkot, and it's Baal Shachas not, and Baal Musa, yes. Now the Gemara continues with a related theme of that of our Mishnah. We open up this parak, this Masech, the talking about Mash Baruch Mardai You have to start saying it, we have a Machlikas, five way, five way Machlikas regarding when do you start saying it. Now that was regarding Geshem. Then we learn the Bryce and the Betal Uberuchas. Regarding the Du, and regarding winds, which is we know that as Mash Baruch, which is bringing the winds, and Moirin Hatal, regarding bringing down the dues, says the Brysa, The Chacham did not require you to mention, even during the winter, they didn't require you to mention Mashe Baruach. And during other times, they didn't require you to mention Moirin Hatal. Now, Haskir, Maskir, if you want to mention it, you can mention it, but you don't have to mention it. Like, and what's the reason? So, Mbukhanin, this is Lafisha, in the sun, because these two things, regarding do and win, they're never held back. And the reason for that is, like Rashi says, because if not for dew and winds, the world wouldn't be able to, with, to, to stand. Now, I, why do we mention, says Rashi, when we mention Murid HaGashem, we say, Masha Baruch Murid HaGashem. Says Rashi, it's not because of the obligation to mention Masha Baruch, it's rather because of the rain that we mention it. Because the winds are helpful for the ground to fix and to dry up the rain, as the Gemara is going to tell us shortly, that Zika Devasa Mitra, the wind that comes after the rain, is Kimitra, like, is like the rain. So we're not mentioning for the winds per se. We're mentioning as secondary to the rain. But there's no obligation to really mention that about winds or do. There's only the obligation to mention it as rain. And we, when we say Maragasha, we say Mashabruach just as a secondary, as ancillary to that of the rain. Now, says the Gemara, what's the source for this? How do we know that dews and winds? are never held back and never, there's no need to, to request, to mention them because there's no need for them to come because they're never taken away. It's not, Says, it's not a request, not a... It's not right, a it's not a request, it's, it's a Shabbat, right. At the same time, we see that it is connected, like we said on the previous staff, we said that uh, we're not going to mention Masha Baruch Min at a time when, we're not, when we don't need it because it's not appropriate. As you said, Chesem Mason, you'll always say, because it's always appropriate, but that of, uh, you're not going to mention if you don't need it, if it's not something that it's a, a somewhat of a request. Sounds like the shvach is always an opening to something you're about to make a request for. And so the Zelda going shows in the, the first three brachis of all the Shemayin Esther is alluded to in the first three. It's like a shvach. He's saying, you know, do can stas, do can stas. Asher can't speak even at this. It's, it's opening up. And those are the things that we ask for. Those are the things that we mention as a shvach. But these things we don't need to make a request for because they're never taken away. Says the Gemara, how do you know that? Betel Menon de Leme Etzer. How do you know that dew is never held back? So the Gemara brings an interesting ride of Sim. Pasim Malachim Aleph, a historical event. Vyem Eliyahu HaTishbi. Eliyahu the Tishbi, who was Mitoshvi Gilad, from the residence of Gilad. Tishbi mentions why you're calling him Mitoshvi Gilad, not from Gilad. Because actually, uh, they were, they were, because of the story of Plegish Begiva, actually there was really no one left in Gilad. They were all killed out, and just they were from the Asafsaf. From the uh, from the ink gatherings, and therefore testifies that he's not just from Gilad; he's from Toishi Gilad. Elio was from the real original um, residents of, of Gilad. So he said, "El Achav, the wicked king Achav." Elio Navi said, "Chai Hashem, Elikei Yisrael." 
But the life of Hashem, the God of the Jewish people, Hashem Mat the Bhana stand in front of him, if Yi Hashan Ma'ila Talamata, if there's going to be in these years do and rain, there's not gonna be Kim Lafi Devare, except based on my word. Al Yahanavi had the key, as we mentioned this in the previous staff, although Hashem never gave it away, he gave it at some time. Eliyahu says it's not gonna be rain. Now Exhibit says after that that um, when he deemed Achim and his people worthy again, he said, go and show al Achim to Achim. The Etna Mota up in the other mountain, I'm going to give rain on the surf, on the face of the, of the earth. Now, Yibu Talu Kamalei, he didn't tell him the Etna Talu Mata. He didn't say, I'm going to give you and rain. He says, I'm going to give rain. My time, what's the reason that he didn't say that he's going to give back the do? Um, the reason is, if he didn't come to bay, is because to let me answer. Because that uh, was never held back. The do was never taken away, even in those years when El Yo was saying there's not going to be rain. So you see that Tal is Lemeatzer. So it's the Gemara, wait a second. So if it's never held back, so the Yoish Tabay Lamali. So why, when he t- swore that I'm, there's not going to be rain, he actually mentioned, he says, Why is he mentioning Tal over there? I thought it's never held back. You're right, when he, when he told him he's going to start raining again, he didn't mention Dubu because it's never held back. And why originally did he say that there's not going to be Tal Amata? So Hach Gemali, no, this is what he was telling him. A filatal de bracha, even a do a blessing which will make something sprout, na me asi, that will not be there. But of course, there was do all that time because tal is like that. Well, that says, give him a wait a second. Then, but then let him return the do a blessing and tell him, and the talamater. If you're saying that that's what was taken away, then there is something to give back. So why didn't he mention the do when he's giving back, not just the rain, but also the do a bracha? Says the Gemara, yeah, but Mashum de Leminkra Milsa, because it won't be recognizable, because there was always do there. And the wicked Achab won't admit that there was something of do of blessing being given out, because if he would say, I'm going to give do and, and rain, <laughs> he's going to be welcome and say, well, you're giving back do Elio. There always was do. Bazooks, there was looks at Narishkai. But if Elio didn't say, I'm going to give back the do, even though there was do of blessing taken away, and that would be given back. But again, that won't be recognizable. But again, we see Akapan, there is do that always is there and never taken away. Now, the Gemara goes on to the next thing. Ruch is with all the How do you know that the winds are never held back? This is always winds. And therefore, one does not have to mention that in Shemayin Esri. Amr Shubalevi says, because Amr Karapal says in Zechariah, Hashem says, Ki ka'ar beruch es Hashemam, because like the four uh, directions of the heaven, like the four winds of the heaven, Pedasti askim nam Hashem, I have spread you out, says Hashem. Now, I come. What is Hashem saying over here when He's saying that, like, like the four ruches of Shemayim, I, I dispersed you the Jewish people. If Hashem is saying to the Jewish people, scattered you amongst the four directions of the world, that's difficult because why is saying ki arba like the four? They are the It should have said in the four directions of the world, I've dis- I've scattered you. What's ki arba? Ella, rather, Hachikama says, no, rather, it's, what he's saying is like this. Not that I scattered you in the four directions, rather, like, meaning, Shem Shiyav Shalom Rucha is just like it's not possible for the world without the winds, because the world wouldn't be able to withstand the heat that would just uh, gather, and um, the, 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 of the, the, the air would just be stagnant. It needs winds. Kachi Yav Shalom Yisrael. So it's just not possible for the world to survive without the Jewish people, where the world was, is only stands because of Yisrael. And that's what the Pasuk was saying. Because like the four winds of the heaven, I have scattered you to the world, to the, the different directions of the world, so that the world should be maintained. Because just like the world needs the winds, so too the world needs the Jewish people. Like the Pasuk says in Yemya, in Malay Barisi Yom Malayla, if not my, my covenant with the Jewish people during the entire day and night, Chukesh Vayavar Slay Samti, Akapan, when we see over here that the Ruches are not Netzarin, just like the world needs the winds, it's saying the, Jew, the world needs the Jewish people, and so we see that it's never taken away. Now, continuing uh, based on the principles we mentioned up until now, some of Chenina, this is important halachas regarding when if someone forgets or doesn't say the right thing of Masha Baruch the Geshem, so the Gemara brings halacha over here. Hilkah, therefore, since you're telling me that you don't have to mention Tal and you don't have to mention Ruches because they're never Nitzaran, so B'maysachav, in the summer months, from Nisan until Sukkot, if on the Masha Baruch, if someone said that Hashem should bring the winds, we don't make him daven over again, 
even though that's something normally you daven when you say Moed HaGeshem, because besides that, the winds are never taken away anyway. It doesn't make a difference that you said Masha Beruah. Om Moed HaGeshem, if you said that Hashem should have the rain come down, oh, then Nagzir Noisim. Then we make him daven over again, because that is held back in the summertime. And since you're davening for rain, you didn't daven appropriately, because it's the summertime, and we make you start over the bracha, which by the first three, they consider one bracha, you have to start over Shmoyna. So you have to say, without saying, Merit HaGeshem, because as we said in the previous daf, that in the summer months, rain is a sign of a curse, because that's a time of the harvest, and therefore you would have to daven over. Now, Tasis over here, a very important Tasis, some interesting piece in Tasis also over here, he says, that's only if in the summer months you mentioned Merit HaGeshem. But let's say you skipped, and you didn't say not Geshem and not Tal, says Tasis, we wouldn't make you say it over again. Because why would we? You don't have to say Merit HaTal, because the Tal is never netzer, never held back. And if you didn't say Geshem, for sure that's not a problem, because we don't want you to say Geshem. So says Tasis, if you didn't say anything, you're not going to have to go back. Now, in the winter, he says, if you didn't say Masha Baruch, okay, we don't make you say over, because we said the Ruchas are not netzer, it's not integral. But you didn't say Merit HaGeshem, then we make you go back, because in the winter, we need Geshem, that's something that's, that is seasonal, and that's something that you have to mention, you have to daven for. Now, if let's say you say, Merit HaTal, in the winter, so as Taisis, be Mazirin, because that's something that's not Netzar, and Tal is going to be not only in the summer, it's going to be in the winter too. Let's say he's not sure if you mentioned or not, this is another halacha, let's say you're not sure if you mentioned or not. So, Taisa says, in important Yisrael, he says, let's say in the winter months, it was uh, after Sukkot. I don't remember, did I say it or not? So for all 30 days after when this man started, is a Chazaka, what you're used to saying is what you said. So because of the Suffolk, for 30 days after, let's say Sukkot, you're going to have to say over, and so two things, let's say by the Yom Neram, Zachreinu Michamechel Kasim Lachayim that you say from Rishon to Yom Kippur. If you're not sure if you said or not, this is Shita's taste. We don't pass like this, but I said you would have to say it over because this is a has card you have to mention. And and Mustama, you didn't say it. Now taste brings from the Yushami that if let's say this similar idea, let's say you were supposed to say Geshen in the wind, and you mentioned Tal, you don't have to say it over because that's uh, something that's always there and, and that accomplishes also the same idea. Let's say you're supposed to say Tal, like in the summer, you mentioned Geshem, then we make you say it over. <coughs> Why? If I didn't say Tal, I wouldn't have to say it over. So Taisus brings, the Yishalman brings from Rabbi Natal, who explains, it's better had you not said anything, not Geshem and not Tal, from then mentioning Geshem. And if you mention Geshem, we're going to make you say it over, because rain in the summer is a Simen Klala. So you're worse off because you said Geshem. Now, but when you're supposed to say Geshem, you say Tal, we don't make you say it over. I, the, there's a Bryce that says, if you didn't say uh, in Birch HaShashanim, we say in Tal or if you didn't mention Gvurz Geshem, we make you say it over. So that's what Tal says, the same idea. That's if you didn't say, not Tal and not Matur. But, but, but if you said Tal, then in the winter, you wouldn't have to say it over where because again, you're saying something appropriate versus in the summer, you say Gesh, you're saying something that's, that's inappropriate. And um, so Tyson brings from the Reeb, the the Erzerua, that in the summer and the winter, he would always say Merud HaTal. Because he says, you're never going to come to a problem. Did I say, did I not say? Because you're always saying the right thing. Because in the summer, you're supposed to say Merud HaTal. And the winter, if you say Merud HaTal, you also say Yaitzah. So you always say Merud HaTal, not to get confused because in the summer, I say yes, and we gotta say it over. And so, in the winter, if I'm not sure if I said it or not, I don't have to say it over. So, always said Merit HaTal. Now, then Thais also brings up, let's say you didn't mention Masha Baruch in Gvurais, meaning in Ate so you mentioned Shemayi Tfilo. And he says, because if uh, the, the St. Talamata, we know the Gemara tells us, which that's coming from a pressing situation where you, you need the rain. If you forgot what you say in Shemayi Tfilo, for sure the Haskar, which is just like from Revach, you don't, you're not at making a request. For sure, you could say it by Shemit Phil, but you can't say it before Shemit Phil. It has to be Dafka uh, by Shemit Phil. After you get in Shemit Phil, you could say it up until you Okaragla. Up until then, you could go back to Shemit Phil. If you didn't say it until you already took three steps back, you got to start all over Shemit Esrei, whether you didn't say Merda Geshem, whether you didn't say Besen Talamata. It says Tais, that's by an individual. But by Shlich Tzibur, interesting tidbit, the Ben Yehuda Paskins, 
that you don't make the shlich tzibur go back because there's only three things you make the shlich tzibur uh, govern over again. Tchiyas of Mason, we didn't say the second, the second bracha in davening. Bein Yushalayim, and the bracha of the Mashinim, because then he looks like a kaifa. So those are the three things that you would have to daven over, but Taisa's holds from Ben Yehuda that none of those other things would you have to say over. <coughs> okay, that was uh, Taisa's on the Sugya. And this is regarding the summer months. Now the Gemara continues, the Maisek Shanim, now regarding the winter, Loyam Amasha Baruach, if you didn't say Masha Baruach, again, Masha Baruach is just that part of the statement. So he said, You don't have to daven over if you forgot to say Masha Baruach, because that's not held back. But if you didn't say the second half of our sentence, Loy Oma, Murid Hageshem, but if you didn't say bring the rain, then that's even nicer because that we need during the winter months. Well, not only that, let's say even someone says Hashem removes the wind, that it shouldn't blow. And also that he uh, take, lifts off the dew that it shouldn't come down. Even if you said that, it must even nicer, we wouldn't make you dive over because it's not held back. It doesn't make a difference to the words if you're saying it or if you're not saying it because it doesn't have any significance whatsoever if you are or not asking for the wind or the, or the dew because it's never held back. Now, that was two things. There's one more thing that also has the same criterion as the <coughs> wind and the dew, and that's talking about the rice of Ba'ov. Regarding clouds, which Rashi says means that the clouds should, um, should become uh, what, knotted or, or meaning like uh, develop the clouds, Uberuchais, and regarding the winds, here it's mentioning just one other one, winds we already mentioned, but this part is mentioning winds and the clouds, the Chacham did not require you to mention, if you want to mention the clouds, that it should be there, so then you can mention it. Like that, what's the reason? Shouldn't be mention because clouds are never, you never have that in the world that there's not going to be any clouds. Says the Gemara, is that really so that clouds are not held back and therefore they didn't require you to mention anything about Makash or Ovim, that there should be clouds? But my Tanya Yisim Yisim from the Bryce it says the pasuk we say in Devarim and Ba'ayim Shemayim but Atzas Hashemayim Hashem is going to close up the heavens and it's not going to be any rain. Now what does it mean Ba'atzas Hashemayim? Says the Bryce that Rabbi Yisim taught Mina Avim Mina Ruches that it's going to close it from the clouds and from the winds. I'm talking about Avim the Ruches. You really say from the clouds and from the winds? Maybe it just means that it's going to stop the rain. No, it can't be because Kishon when the pasuk says Vlo Yimata there's not going to be rain. Hadi Mato Ami, you already told me it's not going to be rain. But Manu and Kaim, Atzas Hashemayim. So what am I going to tell him? I'm saying that the heavens are going to be closed up. That's Mina Ova, Mina Ruches from the clouds and from the winds. So we have a double contradiction. Kasher Ruches, Kasher Ruches, Kasher Ova, Ma Ova. We had before that we mentioned, and here also that the winds and the clouds are not going to be held up. And here we say that it is going to be held up. So the Gemara resolves both contradictions and says, Ova, Ma Ova, like Kasher. First answers the question regarding the clouds. There's two types of clouds. Ha Becharfi. The clouds that are before the rain, those are never held back. Hub afli, the clouds that come after the rain, they, as the Gemara will tell us later on, are secondary to the rain. Those are sometimes va'atza. But since Rashi explains that not always, there's never a time that all the clouds are netza. So therefore, they didn't require you to mention it. But yes, there could be certain types of clouds, which are the post-rain clouds, that they will be held back. And so too, Ruches are Ruches, Lekash, there's no difficulty regarding the winds either. Because Ha, this that we said that they're not held back, it's Baruch Mitsuya, is by a common wind. Those are always around. A Baruch She'in Mitsuya, sometimes the uncommon winds, them it says in the Pasuk, Ba'atza, and still says Rashi, we didn't require you to mention it because again, it's sufficient with the common winds. Rashi explains that you couldn't say by the winds, as we said regarding the clouds, that this is the pre-rain cloud, the pre-rain winds, and this is the post, rain winds, because it's not true. Rashi says the winds, whether related to the rain or not, it's never held back, for example, the common winds, and therefore it gave a different answer, saying the one that would be ne'etza, that is held back in the Ruch, she'en mitzuyah. Says the Gemara, but even so, why do you tell me you don't have to doubt into the winds, because you always have the common winds, even though you're not having the uncommon winds, but Ruch, she'en mitzuyah, chaz dadi, but the uncommon winds, you need for the granary, which is if you want to winnow the straw from the, from the grain, it, the way it does is these, these, these wild winds come and blow it away, so, so you should have to mention it because it's a necessary thing. So the Gemara, no, because Efshah but not Vasa. It is possible to go ahead and do it with a sifter and a sieve, and you could do it some other way. If it's not critical, therefore we don't have to mention it because it's always going to be at least the common winds. Now, tell me, Blitna Brysa, explaining what we mentioned before, the winds and the 
um, the clouds are shnius lamatur. They're secondary to the rain, meaning that they help almost like as if the rain itself. So you must take it me. Which winds and clouds did you tell me are secondary to the rain? We're talking about the winds and the clouds that are the bus in nature. We said that are the ones that are post rain clouds and winds, those are effective like the rain itself. Says the Imam, remember the Bible. You see, is that really to say that it's really beneficial? But we have a passing in the Varim that is by the Teichacha, by the curse of the Jewish people. It says, Yitin Hashem is Matar Artzacha of a Va'afar. Hashem is going to make the rain of your land dust and earth from heaven. It's going to come onto you. As the passage there concludes, Adish Matzva, until he's going to de- destroy you. What is this? What is this rain? Lama Ula Vitimur Rabbi Yehudi says, when we're talking about the rain that's going to make like dust and earth, is Zika the bus image. It means the wind that comes after the rain, where the wind comes and lifts up the dust after the rain, and it goes and it actually clings to the grain, it actually ruins the, the grain. So you see that the winds after the rain is, is harmful, not beneficial. Because the Gemara is not difficult. Depends. Ha, the Asa Nikhil, there's two types of rain. If the rain comes down, um, if the wind comes calmly, so it's not going to lift up the dust, that's beneficial. The Asa Razia, but when the wind comes with a fury, that's actually, as the Gemara explains, Ha, the Mala Afik. When it comes in a fury, it's going to lift up the dust, and that's going to be harmful. That's in the Taikha. Ha, the Lamal Afik. This is what we said that the winds post the rain is beneficial, is if it doesn't come in a fury, it comes calmly, that doesn't lift up the dust, and never that's going to be beneficial. Continuing on the sting, Baham Rabbi Yehudi says, Zika the Basit Mitzur Kibitra. The wind that comes after the rain is like the rain, like we mentioned. And we said, even the Basit Mitzra, Kibitra, the clouds that come after the rain is like the rain. What we didn't mention was the next one, Shimsha the Basit Mitzra, the sun that comes after the rain is Ketrein Mitzra. The sun afterwards like, is like a double rain. So, Mother Muti Mai, where are you coming to exclude? When you mention all these things, you're saying it's like the rain, why are you coming to exclude that what comes after the rain would not be like the rain? So the Gemara Lama Ute Gili Dalelia come to exclude the lightning of nighttime, which Rashi says most of them come at nighttime. So we're saying at the nighttime, that lightning and Bashim should the Bani Karcha, the sun that's between the bowls, meaning between the clouds, where you see it all in one place, the sun, another place cloudy, that's like a bold person where he has here in one place and he's bold in another place. So like the sun that comes through the bold spots, that again would not be as beneficial as the rain. Additionally, another similar type of teaching, Omar Rabbi says, Mali Talgan of Turi. Snow is beneficial for mountains, which Rashi says, and for sure for valleys. It's just that mountains can't maintain rain, only snow, because the rain obviously goes down to the bottom and therefore doesn't nourish the mountains. So it's only snow that's going to help the mountains. Additionally, the snow that's in the valleys actually melts because of the heat that's over there. So therefore, it's like water. But, but the mountains is called shalik, so therefore we're saying that the, the snow on the mountains is beneficial. And how beneficial is it? Like five times rain for the ground is how beneficial the snow-capped mountains are. Because that's what we see from the Pasuk, Shema says the Pasuk Iyad. Because the snow you're going to say, have a Eretz, that you should be on the earth, meaning that it should be the Geshem Motor, rain and shower, the Geshem Mitris Uzay, and rain and rain is his might, meaning you see Geshem is one term, Motor is another term, Geshem is another one, and Mitris is plural, is another two, that makes five. You see, it's like five references of rain is what the snow is, which again, we're saying is really anywhere in the snow, but especially so for the mountains. Another teaching from Amar Rabbah, it says, Talga, snow laturi for the mountains, is beneficial. Mitra razia, a furious rain, is good lilone, is good for the trees. Mitra nicha, uh, a rain that comes down calmly, is good laperi, for the produce of the grain, is the tin top of dalam and alaf. And urpila, which is this thin type of rain, even for the, for, the, for, the, for the seed that's beneath a clump of earth, is mahanyale, it's effective because it starts for it to sprout right away. As the Gemara explains, my urpila, it's the word uru pile, which one interpretation of is that uru means to wake up, and pile means to crack, that it starts growing and sprouting the seed that's in the cracks of the earth, that's this urpila, this little type of thin type of rain, that's effective even, like this says, that's beneath a stone, it's like, it starts helping it right away. Thank you to any time.